last week was none other than Shem, son of Noah, who was Noah's wife. We learned it last week. Namida, and who is Namida? The daughter of Enoch. Doesn't that make sense? That Noah would marry a righteous woman from righteous breed, from righteous heritage, from a righteous stock? Who was Mrs. Noah? Sefer Yashar, the book of Jasher, mentioned three times in the Bible, Joshua 10, 13, 2 Samuel 1, 9, and 2 Timothy 3, 8, when Janus and Jambres withstood Moshe, comes right out of the book of Jasher. It is not inspiration, but it is historically accurate. Tells us that Malkitzedek was Shem because Shem didn't have a mother or father. Wait a second. And this is where a lot of believers get hung up. And they don't believe me. I don't know what to do with them. We know Shem had a what? A mother and a father. Who was Shem's father? Noah. Who was Shem's mother? Namida, or Enoch's daughter, who married Noah. Well, time out. If you believe, wrongly, that Yeshua is Malkitzedek, here's my question to you. Yeshua had both a father and a mother. Mama was Ave Maria. <laughs> Miriam. Miriam. The Papa was Yosef, because in Jewish halacha, in Jewish law, the stepfather equals or is higher than a biological father. So if you're adopted, you're more special than a biological child because in Jewish law, an adopted child is more special than the biological child. So Yeshua had a father, Yosef. If he didn't have a father, who raised him? If he didn't have a father, who taught him carpentry? If he didn't have a father, who gave him a home? He had a stepfather who was equal to a biological father, even though we know the father was his father. Yahweh was a, Yeshua didn't have a earthly father. We know that. Please don't correct me. Don't gossip about me. Don't start rumors about me. We know the father was Yeshua's father. We turn to your neighbor and say, we know that. We know that. But we also know he needed a trade. He needed a living. He needed to learn how to work with his hands. And it was his earthly father, Yosef, who taught him these things. So Yeshua had a father and a mother. There goes your Melchizedek. Has to be Yeshua theory. It says both Yeshua and Melchizedek both had no father and mother, and yet but Yeshua had a father and mother, and so did Shem. So you can't say it has to be Yeshua, because he had no father, Yahweh was his father, and he had no mother. Any Catholic can tell you he had a mother. Any good Catholic, even a bad Catholic. <laughs> Don't worry, Rabbi, he's a good, he's going to go to heaven. Don't worry. Why? Pero he's a good Catholic, I mean Catholic as opposed to a bad Catholic. There is none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned, Romans 3.23, and come short of the glory of Yahweh. It's Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through Messiah Yeshua, our master somebody. Amen, hallelujah. So wait a second. Melchizedek had no mother and father. But yes, he did. Yeshua had a mother and father. And so like Yeshua, notice, whoever this Malkitzedek is, are you listening? Whoever Malkitzedek is, Althea, is not the son of Yahweh, but he is like, in what way? He didn't have earthly parents according to the order of Levi. For it says later in Hebrews chapter 7, it is evident that our master sprang forth not from Levi, but from Judah. So when it came to the Levitical priesthood, listen, Malkitzedek, who was the first Malkitzedek? Shem. And Yeshua neither had parents or genealogies according to the stock, the trade, the tribe, the pedigree, the offspring of, of Levi. Because Yeshua's offspring was from Yehuda, and Shem's offspring was from Noah before there was a tribe of Levi. You getting this, Beltrami? Did I answer your question? 
But wait a second. But it, it, some people still believe that Malki said that has to be Yeshua because Yeshua is eternal Yahweh and thus has no genealogy. Really? Really? Let's turn to Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. Let's see if Yeshua has a genealogy. There are still people who believe Yeshua was Melchizedek because he has no genealogy and he has no beginning and he has no end. Really? Well, let's go to Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, Makijahu 1.1. 1, 1. The scroll of the genealogies of Yeshua HaMashiach Ben David Ben Abraham. Uh-oh. The scrolls of the genealogy or the generations of Yeshua. Not only did he have a genealogy, he had two genealogies. One from Joseph in Matthew, I'm sorry, one from Mary in Matthew, Miriam, and one from Joseph in Luke. He had two genealogies. As did Shem. Why? Because Shem is like the son of Yahweh, and the son of Yahweh is like Shem. They are two different personalities. Is anybody getting this? If you missed last week, my condolences. There's nothing I can do to catch you up from the book of Joshua, the book of Jubilees, other sources proving Josephus, proving that Shem was Malkitzedek. Beyond proof. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Now let's get back to the book of Hebrews. Okay, so that Malkitzedek or Melchizedek, the Kohen of El had no recorded genealogies according to what? The tribe of Levi. And Yeshua also had no genealogy, notice, according to the tribe of Levi. So they were made like each other. And Melchizedek was like Yeshua in the sense that they are not recorded in the Levitical genealogies. They had no mother and father from the tribe of Levi, but they sure did have earthly parents. Of course, the father was Yeshua's father. Ultimately, we know that. Right? The son of Yahweh, who is the one who abides as a Kohen continually. Notice, who abides as a Kohen continually? Yeshua. Why? Does that mean that he was Malkitzedek? Hello? Am I boring you? No. Thank you. Am, am, am I boring anyone, anyone here? Listen to this. Malkitzedek is made like the son of Yahweh because it is the son of Yahweh who abides as a Kohen continually. Listen. <laughs> this means that the original Malkitzedek, as I mentioned, was Shem. Yeshua was born into that existing order as Shem before him. In this verse, the author of Hebrews, Rav Shaul, states that the original Shem and the one sworn into that order by the oath of Yahweh are not listed in the Levitical genealogy. There are no record of any of their parents being from Levi, since neither was a priest in the what? In the order of Levi, both Malkitzedek and the son of Yahweh were not Kohanim in the order of Levi, but in the order of Malkitzedek. You get it? It's not that they didn't have parents, or they didn't have a genealogy, but the genealogy and the parents had, were non-existent as far as the order of Levi is concerned. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I said Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Hallelujah. See, some religious cows die very hard, okay? Some of you are going to go through these two weeks unaffected and not going to study to show yourself approved, and you're going to go back to the same church theology that you're coming out of. There is no way Malkitzedek could be like the son of Yahweh and still be the son of Yahweh. Just because Yeshua has called you and I to be like the son of Yahweh doesn't mean we are the son of Yahweh. If we were, we wouldn't have to be like him. We would already be like him. Both, however, do have genealogies in Scripture, just not according to Levi. Shem, like Yeshua, served in an eternal order and positionally prefigured Yeshua, 
who serves in the same order, 